or Jonah fled from the Lord. So we're standing at really the crossroads of the Bible right here. So many details. Uh, this is Armageddon. I'm, I'm standing. I'm standing on Har Megiddo, the mountain of Megiddo. That's where I'm filming, looking at the valley, the Jezreel Valley. Stunning. Uh, the prophecies that are fulfilled here. Not only does what Josiah was it Josiah dies here when he fights against. Uh, the Egyptian king who is coming down through this pass over here north to go to the Euphrates. This is where Ahaziah dies after he's killed by shot by Jehu or Yehu. He actually flees to this location right here and it was a fortress still and he uh, ends up dying here. But it's fairly kind of an interesting thing. Not only is this the battle place of Revelation 16, 16 where the end of the world occurs in this valley right here, a massive valley, perfect dimensions for a massive battle, Napoleon himself said. But over here is a little town called Shunem. That's where the Shunemite woman lived, and she uh, did, she was a, uh, without a son, and the Lord gave her a son, and she ends up, um, her son ends up dying, and she gets on a donkey, I'm real high there, she gets on a donkey and rides all the way through the Jezreel Valley to where we were just at. She goes up to Mount Carmel, where Elijah is. Elijah sees her coming, or sorry, Elisha, and says, "There's what's wrong? And he sends Gehazi with his staff to run all the way back over here to try and see if he can raise the child who is right there. And doesn't work, so then Elisha ends up showing up and raises the child from the dead. But what's crazy is not only was a widow or a child raised from the dead here, not only the Shunammite woman, but right around the corner, right there, just, uh, you know, a century later, we have Jesus right there at the, and that's Nain, that's the town of, sorry, the town of Nain is right there. He raises a widow's son there as well. So that little town, that little hump in the middle of the Jezreel Valley saw two miraculous uh, resurrections of children. In addition to that, of course, we have Nazareth over here with the precipice mountain where they were going to throw Jesus off it. This is where Jesus grew up looking at the Jezreel Valley every day. Not only that, Jesus went to Jerusalem all the time. So you go that way to go to uh, Galilee. You come back this way to go to Jerusalem and you hang a, a left and you go to Jerusalem over in this direction over here. So Jesus walked through this continually. He taught here. He moved his uh, ministry through this valley, this valley of death, this valley of mourning and destruction. The, the Prince of Life, the God of all creation, walked through here and was there and was there and was there and was there and he went that direction. It, it's stunning. It's like you could almost, the, you could see about half the Bible sitting at Megiddo. Uh, Megiddo was also a chariot city built up by Solomon. It was a city that defended itself against Joshua, and he couldn't take them. The tribe of Manasseh couldn't take Megiddo. It's pretty amazing how much history this little mountain here, it's not a big mountain, how much history it has, and how much future prophecy was going to unfold right here. Praise the Lord, and we get to stand here and see it, to know the past and to know the future of this location. And people are just driving by, probably one of the most famous places in all of the Bible. They're just driving right by it. Wish you all were here. So this is Tel Megiddo. That's a 5,000-year-old altar, Canaanite altar, that had seven steps, and they made their sacrifices, and the temples they built behind it. There were temples behind it. Uh, it's ancient. This is uh, was a continuously occupied mountain fortress for 5,500 years because over there is the route that goes from Egypt north and it goes right up into this valley and runs right into this valley and over here is the way from the Mediterranean Sea 
towards, say, Syria or the Euphrates, it said. And so here was the crossroad where you came together. <laughs> so yeah, right? the water source for the, for the mountain of Megiddo, it goes way down. And Troy's, Troy's wondering how far down. It's only one big What's step. 180, plus, no, you gotta go 80 up. So I'll fall 80, 183 if you hear me 80 up. Say jokes with Travis, the part of the show when Travis comes out and tells a silly joke. Later edition. As it's written here, they found some frescoes that they took them to the museum. They found, was it a fresco or a refresco? <laughs> fresco. Okay. A fresco. They found frescoes here and they took them to the Israel Museum. So we're down on the Sea of Galilee, right below Capernaum. I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, this is what Peter's boat would have been parked up against the shore somewhere, probably over in that direction. Peter, James, and John, somewhere half anchored, maybe even a little further where there might have been some sand or around the corner, but this was hometown. Hometown for Jesus, hometown for Peter, Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Right here. This is what they saw every morning. This is the view Jesus looked at as he taught and as he interacted with the common people. The common people. So we are in the town proper of Capernaum where it says Peter's house was and where Jesus did most of his ministry. You can see the, the wall here. It goes over there, it's not very large. This is a Byzantine church right here that was built 300 AD during the time of Constantine, roughly. But there's the far wall. This big structure here is a viewing over top of a, a house, which I'll show you in just a little bit. They say it's Peter's house, but not very likely. But you can see the houses were quite small. These are the, the outlines of each of the older houses. This is first century. This would have been all in place at the time of Jesus. Over here, you can see they're not large houses. These dwellings were quite small. So here's a full-sized house right here. You can see the entrance that goes in. And you can see there's a couple of chambers in there and that's it, it's the whole house of that size right there. Okay, in the center of the town, so the sea is right over there. So that's where the fishing boats were. And the center of the town, as you see in these walls, was the synagogue. So here's the synagogue, central to the little village that it's in. And this was the meeting place of the Jews for worship. This is the place that we read about in the scriptures, where Jesus healed, cast out demons, right here. In fact, these are the seats of the synagogue. They would sit around these edges. So this is the remaining structures of the first century synagogue. In fact, it has a title right there. This is the synagogue of Jesus, they're calling it. But that's right here. This is the actual location. So we're in Capernaum. This is the original walls of the synagogue. This would have been the area that Jesus would have been entering or standing in for the following story. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. Right here. He taught. These rocks heard the words of Jesus himself. And the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him, and immediately his fame spread throughout all the region of Galilee. This, right here, below this third century church, is where it actually occurred. A demon-possessed man was delivered, Jesus taught, the multitudes were astonished, right here.
So here, right behind the uh, synagogue, are the bases of homes, houses, where the people probably live. Um, you can see that the, the stone walls are standing, but each home probably had two rooms in it, or at least this first house that we're looking at had two rooms, three, entr three entrances, one at the back, one at the side, and one here in the front. There's remnants of pottery shards strewn about. Uh, each house appears to have had a dirt floor.